Hey guys, MC Stu here, and today we're going to look at a budget build for your Gamma Recruits Gemidar Escort. All right, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Gemidar Escort. Um, this was obtained through uh, rolling a Gamma Recruit. Um, it can be reclaimed or repurchased for Dilithium through the ship vendor on any of your other characters. It comes as a T5U with all uh, very rare um, Mark 12 weapons. It's a nice little package to get for free uh, just for rolling that character and being able to reclaim it makes it very, very nice. Uh, before we jump into it, just a quick thank you to all the channel members, everybody that supports the channel, subs, watches the videos, and gives the thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, YouTube has also given us another way uh, to support the channel, and that's thanks, um, which is a button just below if you'd like to leave a tip. Um, it's kind of like a membership, but it doesn't have a reoccurring expense, so uh, that's pretty cool of them to add. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about the ship, the build, and, and what exactly we're working on here. Um, so when I put this together, my goal was to go budget slash free. Um, so this will not utilize any lockbox traits, uh, no lockbox weapons or gear of any kind of sort. Um, and I tried to also keep it um, relatively low down on the rep gear as well. So there's one piece that's at a um, at a tier four in the rep. All the rest of it are at tier two or under. So we wanted to put this together in a way that would be easily obtainable for even somebody that's been playing just a short time or somebody that's just gotten the first opportunity to roll a gamma recruit and uh, wants to put together a build that's going to be effective for normal content and most advanced content. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the build here. So what I decided to go with is Polaron Beam Overload. And I'm going to try and make this run through of what we have here fairly quick. This isn't a super complicated build. There's not a lot in the way of synergy. There's nothing that's opposite of that, quote unquote, but it's not real complicated in terms of set pieces, proccing other things and on and on and on. Um, so essentially all you're gonna need for this build is gonna be a set of five Polaron beam arrays. Um, I have the Dominion Polaron. These come from a mission in the uh, Lost Dominion arc. Um, there's a video on how to access that. It was pulled from the mission uh, journal, but uh, you can still get it. So I'll put that down in the description for you guys. You can use any Polarons that you want to. I just had these, and so these are what I used. Um, I did use a rep piece, and this is in conjunction with a two piece that gives us a little bit of a boost two Polaron damage, but if you don't have this unlocked yet, just slot another Polaron beam array. In terms of the weapons, and the, the, what I kind of worked towards was around the Morphogenic set. So the Morphogenic set is going to be items that you can get from the mission home um, in the Gamma arc. So as a Gemidar character, you're most likely going to play through that first. The last mission in the episode, or the last episode in the arc, is going to drop one of these pieces. So you'll need to run it two additional times to get all three pieces. There's a tactical console here as well. And uh, let's go ahead and just take a look at that because that's kind of what really helps boost this build up in terms of damage. So if we take a look at the, the torpedo itself is an energy based torpedo, so it's going to do Polaron damage. Um, the three piece, and we'll just talk about that now and we'll just kind of look at the set itself. Um, so the two piece is going to give us a 15% recharge uh, time reduction for fire at will, beam overload, cannon scatter volley, uh, torpedoes, basically any of your weapons firing mode, your basic tactical weapons firing modes. Um, so that's nice. We're getting recharged there a little bit faster for all of those firing modes. And then the very nice piece of this is going to be on the three piece. And what that's going to do is anytime we activate fire at will or beam overload, we're going to get plus 2% critical chance. Anytime we activate cannon scatter volley or rapid fire, we're going to get plus 10 critical severity. And anytime we activate a torpedo firing mode, we are going to get a plus 7.5 weapons damage boost. All of these stack three times, so we can get 6, 30, and 22.5. Now the 22.5, this is um, cat one damage, so it's not huge, um, but it's certainly nice to add to the base. But being able to boost your critical chance and critical severity by plus six and plus 30 is massive. 
Um, so just by activating those abilities um, and keeping them up, so they last for what 45 seconds, and the base cooldown on most of these abilities are going to be what they're. I think they're 30 seconds. Um, and so if you're using any kind of cooldown abilities to get the bridge officers uh, to cool down faster, you're going to have no problem keeping this up. And we'll go into that a little bit more in here in, in just a moment. But this three-piece set is really, really nice. And since it's Polaron build and this does Polaron damage, the torpedo and the weapon in the back, which we'll talk about in just a moment, this does synergize with this overall build very, very nicely. Um, let's talk about the weapon in the back that's part of the Morphogenic set. So this is essentially an Omni slash turret. So depending on the firing mode you have activated, it will do one or the other. So if you do beam overload, it's going to fire as an omnidirectional weapon. If you activate cannon scatter volley or rapid fire, it's going to act as a turret. Um, so essentially that's, that's what this is. The game does classify or count it as a set piece Omni. So you could put a Polaron Omni, a crafted one, which I believe the ship comes with one. I didn't end up using it because... I already have a beam in the back, so I was going to just kind of wiggle the ship in order to get, you know, broadside shots. And with the modifiers that come on your omnidirectional, it made more sense to just slot another one of just the beam arrays as they're going to do a little bit more damage because of that. Um, if you were doing this as a, a cannon um, build or a dual beam bank build, then I definitely would have opted for an omnidirectional on the back and probably the board cutting beam so that the whole... The whole setup was forward firing. Um, since we're almost done with the set, why don't we just talk about the other part of it here, and then we'll we'll go back up and talk about the space set. So the um, the console, it's a tactical console. What it's going to do is it's going to give us plus nineteen point seven weapons damage versus foes in our rear ninety degree arc. Um, it is going to give us some additional Polaron damage of 26.3. It's not as good as what we could get, you know, a, a tactical console up to, but we have to slot it if we want the three piece. Um, we're going to get some drain, which isn't a real big deal. And then we also are going to get negative 10% weapons power cost, which is very nice, especially for beam overload. Um, when you fire under beam overload, especially, but in any case, when you fire your weapons, you're going to see this bar over here drop down. When it starts to drop down, you're losing a ton of weapons damage. So anything we can do to re reduce that drain on your weapons power is going to be very, very helpful. Well, all that being said, if we didn't need the three piece to get the three piece set, I would just be running another just basic tactical console here. All right, let's take a look at the space set. So the three piece that we have here is what comes on the ship, um, the Jemadar um, set. Um, and I left it on because it boosts, I believe it boosts Polaron. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so we're getting 16.4 Polaron damage and we're getting some more drain expertise. It does add a clicky, which is this here. And what it's going to do is uh, six kilometers, 90 degree uh, arc, and I believe that's forward arc. Um, it's got a one minute cooldown and it is basically going to drain shields. So pol the Polaron base proc and a lot of, of that kind of thing is going to be based around drain abilities. Drain ability abilities are not very strong in general in the game, except for very, very, you know, certain in particular circumstances, which uh, there's only a few of them. Um, so this clicky, while it doesn't feel bad to press it, it, it doesn't tend to get you a whole lot. On normal content missions and stuff, this is going to help you know debuff the shields of the enemy and get them down faster. Um, but this three piece, you know, the, the two piece is a lot more valuable to me than the three piece. So with that being said, I mean, you really could drop one of these. If I were going to drop one of those three, I'd probably drop the deflector and pick up one of the colony deflectors that gives us critical chance, critical severity. Or I would pick up the competitive engine, which is going to give us some additional speed boost, although this particular ship doesn't really need that. Um, the ship comes with a different warp core. I can't remember what it, which one it is exactly, but I swapped it out for the deuterium stabilized warp core. The main reason for that is for the negative 15% weapons power costs. Again, we want to reduce all the drain we possibly can on our weapons power to keep the damage output as high as possible. Um, I'm using just the stock experimental weapon, and for devices, we're using an energy amplifier, uh, give us additional bonus damage on our energy weapons, and we're using uh, deuterium surplus for an extra little speed boost. 
in the engineering consoles, we have uh, tr Trillium D. This comes from Ragnarok from the Future Proof arc. It's the last mission in it. And this is giving us a very nice boost to our resistance rating, our hull capacity, and our maximum shields. It's also giving us a little bit of a boost to our auxiliary power. Um, so good survivability console, especially on the budget level. Next, we have the uh, House Martog Defense Configuration. Uh, this comes from the mission Brushfire out of New Frontiers. Is that what it's called? I just checked this before I started the video as well. Um, yeah, New Frontiers is where that's going to come from. And uh, this is here. There's an Omni that you can pick up with this, um, and it gives you a very nice boost to your critical chance, but the Omni is Disruptor, so it did not make sense to put it on this. But the console by itself has some very nice survivability stats and some nice uh, flight stats. So we're going to get plus 13.1 maximum hit points. Uh, we are getting plus 6.6 uh, 6 shield power, engine power, and 9.8 maximum shield capacity with a plus 21 to our flight turn rate. Which again, this ship's already pretty nimble, but you know, a little bit more never hurt anybody. All right, so for our first rep piece here, we're using the assimilated module. This is coming from the Omega rep. Um, you can get this right out of the gate at the level tier one. It's very cheap and easy to get. Um, so you'd be able to pick this up pretty quick. And depending on what uh, discipline you rolled your Gemidar in, if you're putting this together on your Gemidar, they may already have this rep already up to five right out of the gate because three of those reps are going to be all the way maxed. Or they were maxed for the time when they came out at five, so you still got to get it to six now, um, but these would be ready to go right away. All right, next we have the reinforced armaments. Uh, this comes from the Mission Beyond the Nexus. This is here, again, also for survivability. So we're getting some power transfer rates. So that's nice. Uh, whole restoration and whole capacity out of this. Um, so when you start using beam overload and doing good damage, especially to you know, larger targets, they're going to focus you. So on this budget level, I really try and focus on the survivability through you know hit points and resistance. That's really kind of the best way to, to go about doing that. And these, especially these three consoles, they do a good job at, at meeting those needs. Next, we have the zero point module. This comes from the Romulan rep. I believe this comes at, at tier one in it. It might be tier two, um, but this is here mainly for the plus 2.4 critical chance and also the boost to um, all subsystems power. So this is going into all of them. So most important to me is my engines and, and my weapons. We're getting the plus 2.4, uh, but getting a little extra into the rest uh, certainly doesn't hurt either. This is also giving us a pretty good junk, uh, junk, chunk of drain. Uh, again, not a huge believer in drain, but um, this is uh, adding to that. And many other things in this build are as well. And like I said, Polaron procs and those things are based around it. So it certainly doesn't hurt in this instance. All right. Next, we have the piezoelectric focuser. Um, this comes from, I believe, the Nukari rep. Same. So this is the two piece with the weapon up front. Um, and let's just, whoops, let's just confirm that. So yeah, Lucari is where this is going to come from. This is probably going to be your highest tier piece that you have to get. This comes in at tier four. Um, and this is here for the huge, almost 40% polar on damage boost it's giving us. It's also giving us some flight turn uh, speed. 15% and some maximum shield capacity of 19.7. Now, this console is great all by itself. Um, the weapon is a good weapon all by itself as well. And if we take a look at the two-piece bonus, we're getting another 15% to Polaron damage, which is awesome. And you guessed it, we're getting some more drain, plus 20. Awesome. Um, so this is a nice little two piece um, to have on on a Polaron build. If you were doing a cannon build on this, you can get a um, dual cannon uh, instead of the uh, the beam bank if you wanted to go that direction. Next, we have the Temporal Disentanglement Suite. Um, I use this quite a bit on the budget level. Um, I don't get as much out of it as I could, and we'll talk about why that is. But this comes from uh, the Iconian arc, and the episode is Butterfly. And the main reason this is here is for the crit chance and crit severity. But that is a scaling uh, bonus that you get or boost that you get based on your auxiliary power. And as you can see with all the bonuses, I have mine barely at half. 
So if I crank that up, I would get a lot more out of it, but I would have to give up speed. And I didn't really want to do that. If you don't like to pilot around real quick or you have a hard time doing it, you could reduce your, your engine power a little bit and put that into the auxiliary. And that would give you a little bit more of critical chance and critical severity out of this console. On top of that, this is boosting the the auxiliary power so it's kind of helping itself uh, feedback like that and then we're also getting some additional shield capacity 26.2 percent um we're also getting i didn't even notice that at the bottom some shield resistance so i love resistance anytime we can get a little extra on that um so we talked about the tactical consoles already so that is the gear that i am using and it is all very easy to get obtainable and will cost you zero money no lockbox stuff or anything like that uh, so here's the stats that I have on the ship sitting still. We're at 27.1 um, critical chance and one uh, 109. Jesus Christ, we're at 129.3 percent critical severity. Let's take a look at the morphogenic set and proccing that. So as we talked about, essentially each of the different kinds of weapons firing modes are going to boost some of this, right? So we're going to skip torpedo because we can't see that. It's giving us a boost to, and we'll see it down here to our damage, but that's not really visible anywhere unless we hover over weapons and stuff. But let's take a look at our critical chance, critical severity when I click cannon or our and um, beam firing modes. So we'll see we jumped three just from clicking that and 10 um, from, I'm sorry, 10 and then three from clicking those two. So if we use photonic officer, get these cooled down a little bit faster and I click them again, you'll see that they start to stack. So I'm going to end up at almost 159% critical severity and uh, 34% critical chance. Um, so you can see all that morphogenic three piece just really boosts that critical chance and critical severity, um, which is, it's huge uh, for your, your damage output. And then we'll just let that refresh one more time so we can see the max here. And there we go. So those are maxed out at 33 and 159. Let's scroll through the skill tree and take a look at what we have here. Um, so it's kind of my catch-all, but it's a little heavier towards science because I run science on this free-to-play character quite a bit. Um, you'll see that I do have an emphasis on some of the survivability here on this free-to-play character between the whole plating and the immunize whole plating. Um, so this one is going to give you resistance against uh, kinetic damage. This is going to basically take care of all your energy damage types. Uh, I highly recommend using these. Um, if you're a beginner, mid, you know, in, unless you are like min maxing and you're just putting insane amounts of damage out. Like if you look at like my paid account and the super high end builds that we have, we rely on being able to kill the enemy so fast that they can't even damage you. Right. But if I were to get into a place where I'm taking damage, those ships are going to be killed pretty quick. Uh, but it's just kind of a different style of building, but I highly recommend taking advantage of this. I also highly recommend filling out almost all of your, uh, your tactical side. If I was going to redo this, I'd probably put the last two points into here so I can get all of the, uh, ultimate enhancements from the tactical line here. Let's take a look at traits. So we are using all stock traits with the exception. I have two that were unlocked through the crafting system. Um, so you can kind of take a look through these and see what they are. I'll, I'll read through them here. So we have fleet, uh, or, I'm sorry, innocuous. This is giving us uh, some reduction of threat and plus five critical severity. Uh, this is one that is from the um, crafting system. Once you hit level 15, this is giving us some extra shield penetration for our torpedoes. We're using point blank shot. Um, I have to put down in the description where this comes from. This is actually from a mission drop in the Iconian arc. I just can't remember exactly which one, but it gives you a scaling bonus damage to your energy weapons based on your distance. Um, so if you get uh, with it's in between two kilometers and six kilometers. So if you're at two kilometers, you're at ten percent. If you're at six, you're going to be almost at zero. Any anything outside of six, you're not getting any bonus damage from it. So by getting somewhat close, you don't want to get too close because, you know, if it blows up or whatever it may be, you don't want to take a warp core hit. Uh, but it's a nice little free personal space trait that you can pick up. Uh, we're running a, a torpedo, so we have the projectile training for the plus 5% bonus damage 
We are running beams, obviously. So we're running beam training for the plus 5% bonus damage. Fleet coordinator. So anytime you're running in a team, TFO, anything like that, you're going to get plus 2% bonus damage for every team member, including yourself. So on a regular old TFO, you're going to get plus 10 bonus damage. That's very nice. Uh, next, we have operative for the plus 1 critical chance and plus 2 critical severity. And some of this stuff I just kind of used as filler, but so I looked at a lot of what I run, what's kind of most popular in the game and decided to go with these, these two here. Um, so these two are going to give you different kinds of resistances, plus 10 phaser, plus 10 disruptor plasma. And then the next is going to give us tetrion, polar, polaron, and antiproton. So it pretty much covers the full gambit of energy types and just adds to that overall resistance rating, which is very, very nice. Lastly, for the personal space traits, we have Beam Barrage. This also comes from the crafting system on the uh, the Beam School. And uh, once you get to level 15, you can unlock this and use it. And it's giving us plus 2% all, uh, all beam damage bonus. Is that what that says? 2% all, all, all beam damage bonus for 30 seconds stacks up to three times. We're getting another 6% bonus damage out of this for our beam weapons. For space traits, we are getting improved command frequencies. These are all of these are unlocked from your specializations. And why don't we look at that real quick? Running strategist, and for some reason, I'm running primary temporal, probably because I was running science. If I could do this all over again, <laughs> I would have been running uh, Intel. But this uh, this is what I was running on the uh, couple runs that I recorded. I'll be showing one of those. This is what I was running on it, um, but. Had I saw this before I started recording, I would have went primary to the Intel uh, is what I would have done. That's what I would recommend doing as well. So, but as you fill these out, they'll unlock traits if you're unaware. And um, this is one of the you know free ways to get pick up traits, those kinds of things. As you complete these out, you will get those. And that's all I have used here. So the first one is coming from the command. Uh, specialization and essentially what this does is it is uh, removing it's doing two things it's reducing the cooldown to call in your fleet support um, it's also removing the requirement that you have to be 50 percent or lower health um, so normally you have to be low health before this button will even light up and let you click it by slotting this, I can call this in anytime and get, in my case or your case, if you're running a Gemidar character, two Gemidar ships. So it'll send in ships of whatever you know, um, you know, allegiance you you have uh, in the game. So if it's Romulans, it'll be Romulan ships, Federation, Federation, Klingon, so on. Next, we are running Improved Arrest. This is coming from the Constable specialization, and the main reason I have this here is when defeating primary target to self. Um, negative 30% recharge time for bridge officer abilities. That's great, especially since, you know, my primary target's pretty much my only target because this is a single target build except for the torpedo spread that's on it. Um, so anytime that, that I kill something, we're getting that reduction. Um, you can only, this only affects or goes into effects, effect one every, uh, once every 30 seconds. Um, on top of photonic officer and, and other things, um, you know, it's not going to keep everything way down, but it's a nice little extra to keep your abilities on cooldown for you to use anytime you want. This is probably one of my favorite space traits that we can get for free out of the uh, specialization system. This comes from, oh, uh, what is it? In my mind. Strategist. Um, and what it does is it changes... Um, it changes your uh, brace for impact into basically a damage clicky. So the trait is called improved unconventional tactics. Um, the captain's ability is right here is what it looks like. Normally what would happen is if you were below a certain amount of health, you could click that and it would give you a, a boost to your resistance or you can use it anytime. It gives you a boost to your resistance. Uh, while this trade is slotted, if you click it, it's going to give you 20% bonus damage, which is a nice boost for 15 seconds. Um, so it's a very nice cat 2 damage boost that you can get from having this trade slotted. 
Lastly, we have improved predictive algorithms. This comes from special Intel specialization. And what this does is activating any weapon enhancement ability, removes one debuff effect and grants plus five accuracy rating for 30 seconds. It'll stack up to four times. Now we're running three different special firing modes. So this stacks up very, very quickly and it stays up the whole time. So that is very, very nice. Um, lastly, down on the space reputation, um, we have advanced targeting systems, and that is 20% uh, critical severity. This comes, I believe, from the, I is it the Iconian? Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, or is it Dyson? It's the Dyson, and I believe it comes from the second tier. Yeah, so second tier for that, and then the next one, since we're already on this page, is going to come from the Romulan, and that's going to be on the second as well uh, tier of that, and that is going to give us a plus 5% critical chance. And then lastly, we are using the Chrono Capacitor Array, and this is giving us some additional bridge officer ability cooldown, 9.4%. So none of these are real huge in terms of the cooldown size, but once you add it all together, it, it definitely adds up and is a nice addition. So those are our traits. Let's take a look at our bridge officer seating. So we've already talked about all the firing modes. Um, so with the morphogenic set, basically we just want one of the flavors from each of them. If for some reason you just weren't gonna run torpedoes, you just don't want that on there. Um, at a minimum for the morphogenic set, you wanna have the um, cannon and beam to get the critical chance, critical severity. Uh, but again, any kind of damage boost you can get to base is good as well because critical severity is a you know is a multiplier against your base damage right so if you add a boost to either side of that equation you're going to get a lot of extra out of it so i would recommend running all three running a torpedo take advantage of it. if you have the morphogenic set on there you're gonna be running a torpedo anyway so um People will use the morphogenic set with this configuration for torpedo builds and a lot of other things as well because it's an all damage boost. You do lose out on some stuff, you know, obviously because it's polar on focus, but there are use cases for using that in other kind of scenarios. Um, but I don't want to get too off track there. Um, so we're using tactical team one, and then in the commander slot, we are using attack pattern omega three. And the reason for that mainly is the 24.9. Um, bonus all damage boost. Very, very nice for 15 seconds. It also gives us some additional um, flight speed, turn rate, big chunks to that. Um, all damage resistance rating gives us a huge boost to that. It, this is just a great, great ability to have um, on the bar here. And since if this was a cannon scatter volley, I'd probably run this in the um, Lieutenant Commander because scatter volley three we'd want in the main, but I would definitely have attack pattern Omega on it either way. Uh, in the next tactical slot, we have tactical team again, and that's because I didn't have anything else for free that I could run. Uh, if we could use lockbox stuff, I'd probably run like chemocyte on here or something like that. And then um, next we have the torpedo spread too, since we have torpedoes. And in fact, I'd probably go torpedo spread um, one and chemocyte here in this pos uh, position to get a little bit more out of the chemocyte. Uh, for engineering, we are using emergency powered engines. This is to proc a duty officer, which we'll take a look at in a moment that refreshes evasive maneuvers. If you've watched any of my videos, um, I talk about this every single time. If you click evasive maneuvers and you take off, you're flying around doing whatever, and that runs out since it doesn't last very long, right? And it goes on cooldown. If I hit emergency powered engines, you will see that that cools down to four seconds and I can use it again. Um, it's a nice little ability paired with the bridge, or I'm sorry, the duty officer. All right, next we have um, reverse shield polarity. This is a very nice uh, survival clicky when you need it. Uh, it's not going to save you in every instance, but it's it's very nice if you're starting to take quite a bit of damage or you get a tractor beam on you or something like that. Um, use this and that'll break you loose. We are running an energy weapons build, so we have emergency power to weapons. Um, in terms of priorities, um, if this only had a you know a lieutenant engineer, it would be emergency power to engines, and it would be emergency power to uh, to weapons. So you want to prioritize emergency power to weapons in whatever highest slot you can fit it in. In terms of the engine side, like. It doesn't matter because you don't get much out of this. It doesn't make you a lot faster. It's purely just here, just to proc the duty officer for basic maneuvers. 
All right, moving on to the next engineering slot, we have engineering team. Uh, this is for the extra hit points. This will remove um, you know subsystems that are offline. Some nice little repair and survivability clicky. Um, next in science, we have hazard emitters. This is a very nice uh, heal over time. Um, you'll notice I do have it down on my spam bar, and the reason it was there is um, when um, when you're running. Um, Jesus, I forgot this one just a second ago. <laughs> Uh, strategist. Okay, I'm not even there yet. So when you're running, is it strategist? Yeah, it's strategist. So when you're running strategist and you run a heal like this, it's going to give you a little bit of a boost to your, um, is it strategist or is it intel? I can't remember now. It's one of those. We'd have to read through, but I'm not going to take up all that time here. But essentially the reason it's here is if you take a look at the critical chance and we click that, you'll see that boost another 3%. Um, so this is not only giving me just an ongoing heal over time, but it's boosting my critical uh, chance there. And I feel like we do need to look and see where that comes from. Um, I thought it was strategist, but I always get mixed up if it's strategist or not. It's not. It's got to be intel. And you guys are probably looking at me like, what the heck are you doing? Um, I'll be looking at this forever. I'll put it down in the comments, guys. Yeah, um, if you want to know for sure which one it is, I'll look it up here and put it down in the comments. All right, let's finish up with station. So the last one, we have Photonic Officer 1. If I could fit a higher one in, I would, but I can't. Uh, what this is here for is Bridge Officer Cooldown. And what it does is it reduces the recharge time of your Bridge Officer abilities by 2 seconds, each second for 20 seconds. Um, by 2%, not seconds. Um, and so 2% sounds small, and it is small, but it's 2% every second for 20 seconds. And so this adds up pretty quick, especially if you have other cooldown abilities, which we do. Most of the abilities that I have that I'm using are cooling down at the maximum rate that they can, which is 50%. There's a hard cap. You cannot cool an ability down more than that, a bridge officer ability that is. The only thing you can do to get 100% uptime on something is to have a trait or some other ability that extends it, right? So if you look at like Cannon Scatter Volley and you look at the, uh, you know, how, how to have Cannon Scatter Volley up full time, you can use Ox to Bat, you can use Photonic Officer, you can use, uh, uh, what is it, um, Boiler to cool it down, but you're only ever going to get half of it, which is 15 seconds and it only runs for 10. So in order to have it up full time, you would have to have a trait like um, uh, the barrage trait and it would extend it another five seconds, bringing it up to 15, giving you 100% uptime. So just a little bit of background there on bridge officer abilities. There is a hard cap for the cooldown and the only other way you can get more out of it is to extend the duration of the effect of the ability. So photonic officer is an excellent, cheap way to be able to cool down your abilities very, very well. You can get this from the training, uh, bridge officer training vendor, get it off the exchange, you can craft it. It's cost next to nothing. Um, I highly, highly recommend that. All right, let's take a look at bridge officer abilities. Our not bridge officer abilities, our um, duty officer. So I only have two here. Um, I just kind of pulled everything else out. So this one I got off of just some random, you know, duty officer drop mission, I think on Starfleet Academy. And this is giving me a little bit extra recharge time anytime I use a um, subsystem power. So emergency power to engines or emergency power to um, uh, weapons. So either one of those has a small chance to cool it down a little bit, the other one a little bit faster. If you stack three of these, you can get a lot out of it. Um, if if not, it's kind of a hit or miss. But again, at this level, any little bit of extra we can get is going to be helpful. Now, the duty officer I talked about earlier, that is uh, is this guy here. And this is what's allowing emergency powered engines to cool down my evasive maneuvers. He comes from the Phoenix store. So let me just buy one of these Phoenix packs. And let's just open it so I can show you where it comes from. Probably should have one of those prepared. All right, so I got a rare voucher, and that just happens to be what he is. So uh, if you have a rare or if you have a very rare, you can break it down, but you need a rare, and he is right here. Pick him up, slot him, use him all the time. He is excellent. I use it on basically every single one of my builds. All right, guys, so that is the build. Um, let's go ahead and run it through something here. I'll let it be a surprise. Um, 
I was trying to avoid ISAs in this. I did run a few. Um, it did about 50 to 60 K DPS in both of them. One of them was very long. Um, I was with another group where we're all kind of running similar builds. They were pugs. I didn't know any of them. I haven't died one time in this ship though, with this particular build. And that was a, an advanced run ISA, which can be fairly difficult. Um, but I think we're going to do one of the red alerts. So let's go ahead and jump into that and see how this bad boy does. All right. Um, so this thing did great and it's a lot of fun to fly. Um, as you could see, it was handling enemies without a big problem. I mean, it's not a one shot kill kind of a ship. Um, those red alerts are normal mode, so they're not overly difficult. Um, but as I said before, I ran it through a couple ISAs and I didn't have any problems dying. And as you can see in that run, uh, we, we didn't have much of any kind of concerns when it came to dying either. And it still put out a good amount of damage. I was able to, to contribute to the team, get multiple kills. And on top of the ship itself, just being a joy to fly, um, yeah, I, I love it. It, it. It's a great ship. It's a good basic build. Um, you know, it's not, you know, some super special thing I came up with. Uh, you know, we just follow, follow the rules, you know, similar energy types, focus towards resistance, hit points, those kinds of things, especially on the budget and, you know, beginner kind of level, it'll, it'll save you a lot more than, you know, trying to boost your shields or your regen rates, those kinds of things. Um, definitely focus towards, you know, that resistance and hit point ratings on it. 
Um, but overall, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to keep keep messing with it and, and having some fun. If you wanted to go kind of next level, still budget, though, I'll give you a couple uh, a couple tips of what I would do. Um, so I would swap out the deflector for the colony deflector is what I would do for the critical chance, critical severity boost that it gives you. I also would go with all uh, fleet spire tactical consoles, um, depending on what you want to boost here. I'm, in my case here, I probably would go all uh, locators or maybe two locators and one vulnerability, um, uh, exploiter is what I would do, but I definitely would go with all fleet consoles there. Um, once you get up to having the discovery rep unlocked, I definitely would do the, uh, the lore, the lore cater uh, as it's called for the huge boost. You get to critical chance and, uh, shield penetrations, great console. Uh, definitely go that route as well. Um, if you wanted to go super high end on something like this, take a look at the, the Lobby console video that I have. If you can afford to get, you know, the Lobby and all that kind of stuff, you're probably going to move on from a tier five U ship. But, uh, I also would recommend X upgrading this. I planned on doing it and I, I just didn't get around to it, but I'm going to. The nice thing is, is that if you X upgrade this ship, your Gemidar ship, and then you go to another character, you go to the ship vendor, you spend the 900 dill that it costs to buy the ship from the ship vendor. When you get it, you'll be able to upgrade this ship to an X upgrade for free because you already have it upgraded on another character. So it's it's pretty cool that that, that doesn't just work on sea store ships, but pretty much any ship in the in the game that has the, you know, is, is the exact same ship. If you upgrade it on one character, it'll have the free upgrade uh, to X upgrade it on any other character uh so nice little little extra there all right guys uh i hope that was helpful uh let me know what you guys think let me know what you guys are doing with uh with your gemidar ships uh for the new recruits that you've rolled down in the comments uh as always thank you very very much to all of you that watch the videos hit the thumbs up button ring the bell comment it's super helpful for me i appreciate it and thank you very much to all the channel members i really appreciate your guys' support uh quick heads up there is a giveaway running in the discord server links down below uh we will have some very nice giveaways going most likely this week i got to check with the wife and see what's going on um this weekend it's my mom's birthday on friday so it won't be that day but probably sunday normal time i'll up, uh, update you guys um in the community tab for that all right guys till next time thank you for watching have a good one Hey guys, appreciate you watching. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, ring the bell, and sub to the channel for the latest news updates and how-to guides.